Well, you know, just a quick comment about the last game. Uh, not necessarily our best consistency and execution um, when it comes to just how we play, play in and play out, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, but the players really competed well in the game, overcame a lot of adversity, and hung in there and kept grinding and came out with a win. So um, it's always great to have SEC Players of the Week, Derrick Henry and Adam Griffin, both guys very deserving. Our Players of the Week were Derrick Henry, Ryan Kelly, and Ardarius Stewart on offense, defense, Reuben Foster, Marlon Humphrey, and Jonathan Allen, special teams, Adam Griffin and Keith Holcomb. <laughs> I don't really have any updates from anything new on injuries or anything from yesterday. But this is a great opportunity for our team to play in the SEC championship game. This is something that we still feel uh, is very, very important and something that's a significant accomplishment because of the quality of our league and uh, winning our division and having an opportunity to play against a really good Florida team. This is a very talented team. They're extremely well coached. Jim McElwain has done an outstanding job there. Uh, they've won 10 games this year. They're probably the best overall team that we played against all year long. They have you know, a great defensive team, probably the highest ranked defensive team we faced all year long. From a national standpoint, they also do a great job in taking care of the ball and getting turnovers. They have a very positive turnover ratio. Very talented players on offense. The quarterback, Trayon Harris, is a dual threat kind of guy that can make plays passing or with his feet. You know, reminds me a lot of Blake in terms of his style of play. Uh, Kelvin Taylor is an outstanding running back, probably as good as we played against all year. Uh, they have some very talented receivers and good skill guys who can make big plays. And this is one of the most talented special teams. They've struggled a little bit on field goals this year, but other than that, they have the, one of the highest net punts in the country. Uh, they have a great punt return guy. Kickoff return has been really good for them. So this team is really, really good on special teams. So th th this is an outstanding team that we're playing. Uh, they wouldn't be in the SEC championship game if they weren't. And I think anybody out there that thinks this is not going to be a real challenge and a real test for our team is – you know, I don't, I don't know. What, I don't know what you're thinking. I don't, I don't know what you're thinking is. So, I, I really don't get it. You touched a little bit on their defense, but what makes them so special on that side of the ball in terms of their numbers and the production they've had? Well, they've got very talented players, especially well, both both ends. I was going to say their fronts very talented. They're very athletic. They've got really good inside players. They've got good edge rushers. The linebackers are really good players. Uh, they got a really good secondary. Good cover people, two good safeties, one of the best corners in the country. So they've got really, really talented players, and they're an outstanding defensive team. Jeff Collins does a great job with them. They're well coached. They play hard. Uh, they really get after it. So uh, and they were right in the Florida State game. Florida State struggled with them the whole game long uh, until right at the end. And just, just to follow up on the corner, so Vernon Hargreaves gets a, a lot of attention nationally, an established player for them. But what, what have you seen from the other corners in particular, Jalen Tabor, and how he's come along this year? Jalen is a good player. Um, we guy we thought a lot of here and recruited him hard to come here, and uh, he's played very, very well. You know, I'm, I, I think this is very talented secondary all the way around. They've got two really good safeties as well. You said in the past how good of a thing it is when your best players are your hardest workers. At what point during Derek's career did you realize that was part of his competitive character? Derek has always been that way. He was that way when he first came here. He always was a hard worker. He was anxious to improve and try to overcome any deficiencies he had as a player. And, you know, by his own admission, when he first came here, talked a lot about how his experience as a running back was only carrying the ball and that he had a lot to learn about pass offense, pass protection, being a receiver. And he certainly did a, a good job of developing and improving in all those areas. And uh, I think his understanding of our running plays and how to read those plays is something that he's gotten better and better at as well. Uh, Coach, you spoke after the game Saturday about sort of the necessity of having an experienced back 
holding on to the football in the fourth quarter in a game that's that's a nine point game for most of the quarter. Going forward this week, depending on Kenyon's health, do, do you tri continue to try and work Damian and Bo into that role where they can can help a little bit with the carries? No question that we certainly need those guys to sort of mature, be what we need them to be in terms of their confidence, their ability to execute and understand what's necessary on that particular play for them to play well, have a winning performance on that play, whatever you want to call it. But we definitely need more guys to be able to contribute at that position. It's not was not our intention to have Derrick Henry carry the ball 46 times in a game and 14 times in a row at the end. It's kind of the way the game evolved, but we, we need to do more with more people on offense if we're going to have success in this game. Uh, separate your own uh, your input into the defense. What do you see as Kirby's greatest imprint that he's left with this defense and the tradition that you all have had defensively? Well, this is Kirby's defense. He's the defensive coordinator. I try to be a good graduate assistant whenever I can to sort of help him out. Um, and it is a system that he grew up in, which is the old system that we played for years and adapted through the years. So he understands it and can apply it in the game as well as anyone. And I think that's the key. It's, it's not only just understanding, but it's being able to apply the principles you know, in the situations in a game. So that's what he's really good at. That's what he's done. I think his competitive character certainly rubs off on the players in terms of his spirit, his enthusiasm, his attention to detail. Uh, all these things contribute to how we've been able to play defensively. So, you know, he's, he, he's done a, a really, really good job, not just this year, but for a lot of years. You talked about Florida. Sorry. You talked about Florida's defense and how good it is. Jake has obviously progressed all year. How do you see him handling a defense as good as Florida with the with the corners and everything that they have? Well, I, I think it's not just about Jake. I think it's about everyone on the offensive field has to perform well to be able to make these things happen for us. Receivers have to run good routes. They have to get open against good people, good cover people. They've got good rushers up front. We've got to do a good job in pass protection. Quarterbacks ha has to have an opportunity to be able to function so that he can do his part in what he needs to do. And when Jake has had that opportunity, he's done a really good job for us this year, and that's certainly going to be the challenge for our entire offensive team. When did you first become aware of Kirby, and why did you add him to the staff initially? Well, that was a long time ago. Uh, I, this must be... At LSU, however many years ago that's been, Kirby had coached and knew Will Muschamp, and Will was on our staff at LSU. And I think at the time, Kirby was a, had, had coached, but was a graduate assistant at Florida State. And I was looking for a good, young, smart, bright, aggressive secondary coach that we could sort of develop because I we had gone through a couple years of I hire a secondary coach that'd be there for a year. I don't know if it's because I was a secondary coach or what, but then they'd be gone in a year, mostly to the NFL. So I wanted to get a younger guy and sort of grow and develop with the guy and have the guy with me for a while. So it's worked out great. He's been with me for a while. He's been a great coach. He's done a great job. He did a great job when he's secondary coach. And he understands the back end, which I think is real critical to being a good coordinator. And coaches the linebackers now and does a really good job with that. So that really is sort of how it transpired. Uh, I'm, I'm so thinking about what's going to happen next that I get all these recollection questions. They're a little hard for me. Maybe it's my age. I don't know. What do they call that when you can't remember stuff really well? You guys know. Thank you. Come back up here with 
you mentioned after a couple of games this year that Jake has done a good job making some of the checks at the line to help Derek out and put him in the right position. Does he deserve a little bit more credit for what he's been able to do to help Derek with the season he's had? Well, I think our whole offensive team deserves a lot of credit, and I think Derek is the first one to try to give other players on the offense credit. You don't, you don't gain the yards that he's gained without the offensive line doing a really, really good job and without the coaches having a plan that puts them in the best possible play and then the quarterback being able to implement that in the game so that you eliminate negative plays. And I think that's what our staff has done a good job of, what Jake has done a good job of implementing, and obviously our offensive line and Derek have done a good job carrying out. So um, I, I think that all those people on offense deserve a lot of credit. Nick, kind of a big picture question here, um, but you've spoken about the Mark Rick firing and, and Les Miles situation before. But how much do you think your success here at Alabama has impacted the national coaching standard that coaches are held to right now? And do you think that perception is fair at all? Well, I would be more concerned about, from my perspective, when we lose three games, what's going to happen to me? Look, I'm an old school, believe in college football and what college football is all about. And I know from a media standpoint, nobody really cares about this, but we're supposed to help develop people who have a better chance to be more successful in life because they were involved in the program because of the leadership and example that were set by people and the standard that you have guys do things to on and off the field so that they have the kind of thoughts, habits, and priorities that are going to help them make the kind of choices and decisions that they can take advantage of their gifts. We're supposed to help them develop a career off the field so they can graduate from school, which is going to help them be more successful in life. And we're supposed to help them develop as football players so that whether they can have a career as a football player, their experience as a football player and as a competitor is going to help them down the road in their life. So there's some guys that have done a really, really good job of that in their programs. If you look at their record of graduation rate and um, things like that, and they win nine games and, you know, that's not good enough. And I, I, I don't have any idea of what anyone's standard is for what they want to accomplish in their organization what their expectation is. Uh, but I do think that there's a lot of negative energy out there sometimes that for whatever reasons get created as soon as you don't have success. And, you know, I think you all set us up a little bit for that. Just like, you know, talking about what I hear everybody talking about this game and how we're supposed to win this game, as if Florida does not have a good team that won 10 games and is one of the nationally ranked teams and beat Ole Miss really bad, a team that beat us. So how did they do that? Or so if we fail in this game, you can put the hammer on me. Set up. I get it. Hope our players get it. Hey, Coach. Uh, the the quick success. Joe, I'm getting wound up here now, so be be careful. <laughs> the uh, the quick success that Jim McElwain's had as as a head coach, both at Florida and at Colorado State. What what did you see that maybe led you to believe that that this was going to be his future? Well, I've always thought Mac was a really really good coach, really good guy, uh, well liked by the players, very good teacher very innovative in terms of uh, creating issues for the defensive team, but doing it in a way where it doesn't create problems for his own players. Uh, it's not like you're running new plays all the time, 
but maybe the presentation is a little bit different. So the guy's integrity professionally, the kind of person he is, it's all A+. Plus. So any, any success that he's had is not at all a surprise to me. And he did a fabulous job here with the players that we had at the time, developing a very productive, consistent offensive group that helped us win a lot of games. Last one with Ken. Just wondered if you'd talk a little bit about Hale Hentges' progress and what, you know, just seen him on the field a little bit more. What's his role uh, with your offense? Tight end has been a position that we've sort of, other than O.J. Howard, who sort of is a really good H-back type and has played well of late. We have looked for another guy to go with, you know, sort of our two tights, two wides, which we play quite a bit. We use Brandon Green in a role at that position who's really was an offensive tackle that we moved to tight end. And Hale was a young guy that we recruited. It's very bright. Uh, understands football, has gotten some experience, and with that experience has really improved his level of consistency and performance and his confidence, I think. So it merits, you know, him getting a, a more of a chance to play. So, and he did a pretty good job. He's done a pretty good job of taking advantage of that opportunity and how he's played, and we're very pleased with his progress.